Welcome to the May edition of Northeast Journal. I'm your host, Joe Cullen. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll visit the new home of Lakeshore Players Theater in White Bear Lake. We'll chat with a gold medal winning hockey player from Badness Heights. And we'll see how area high school students were warned about the dangers of drinking and driving. All that and more is straight ahead on Northeast Journal. Hello everyone and welcome to the May edition of Northeast Journal. I'm your host Joe Cullen. Every month on Northeast Journal we give you an inside look at the people and places that make up the Northeast section of the Twin Cities. Several months ago we showed you footage from the groundbreaking for the new home of the Lakeshore Players Theater. Well, the theater is almost ready and a ribbon cutting was held recently for the public to get their first look inside. Here's some highlights. <music> Hello everyone, thank you for coming. I'm the next in line to welcome you to our beautiful Hannaful Performing Arts Center, home of Lakeshore Players Theatre and Children's Performing Arts. I've been able to say that statement without using the term future home, and I have to tell you, it feels pretty good. <laughs> On a future show, we'll take a closer look at Lakeshore and their new building. It's time for a short break. We'll be right back to visit with Badness Heights' Hannah Brandt, who recently won a gold medal in the Winter Olympics. It's the most natural thing for me to dance, but I was tripping and I was falling and didn't even know what multiple sclerosis was. When I perform, I really love connecting with people. It's definitely cool to be able to give someone an experience through virtual reality. Oh my God. I dream sometimes and I see that. Welcome back to Northeast Journal. In February at the Winter Olympics in South Korea, Hannah Brandt from Badness Heights won a gold medal as part of the U.S. women's hockey team. Hannah is here today to tell us about her Olympic experience. And Hannah, thanks so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me here. And uh, last month on our show, we had a, a story about you and your sister, Marissa, and the uh, event they had in Vanness Heights to honor you guys. And I'm sure a lot of our viewers are already kind of familiar with who you are. But first off, can you just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself? I understand you're originally from this area, Vanness Heights. Yeah, I was born and raised in Vanness Heights. And then um, I played youth hockey for White Bear Lake. And um, it was so much fun to be able to come back and have that event with my sister and be able to share share our experience with the community and to be able to go out and skate with some of the little kids and um, I'm just excited to be back home and um, this is where I grew up and this is where I want to be able to share my experience with. And now I understand you played hockey in high school at Hill Murray yep. and then collegiately at the University of Minnesota yep. so you obviously played a lot of hockey you know in this area especially in the state. Um, when did you first kind of find out or you know what was the process of getting to be part of the you know women's national team and then ultimately on the Olympic team? Yeah, it's it's a long process. Uh, I remember when I was, I think I was eight years old, I watched the 2002 Olympics with my mom and I told her I want to be out there one day. So that was kind of when I set my goals of making an Olympic team, but um, the process to actually get there, it's it's a long, tedious thing. You'd go to camps and stuff all growing up, development camps, and I made my first national team. It was a U18 team. I was a junior in high school, and then actually the next year, as a senior in high school, I made the 
actual national team. I went to the World Championships as a 17-year-old. I was the youngest one on the team. Um, and then from there, you just keep getting asked back or cut. So I got cut from the 2014 Olympic team, which was unfortunate, but uh, made it in 2018. So I guess uh, the journey, it was hard, but it was worth it. And now, as I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with, but you know, your sister, Marissa is also mm -hmm. a hockey player. She played in the Olympics for the, uh, I guess, unified Korean team. And you guys were getting a lot of, you know, attention for that. You know, not only that your sisters both the Olympics, but the fact that you're playing for different countries. You know, what was that like when you knew that she'd be over there playing uh, and just kind of everything that went into that? I know she was adopted from South mm -hmm. Korea, so that was kind of unique too, that it wasn't like you guys were playing in Canada or something, but right. kind of all this just kind of came together at once. Yeah, it was, it was crazy how everything kind of worked out. Uh, three years ago, she got a call asking her to come over to Korea for a tryout, and she had just graduated from Gustavus, so she thought she was done with her hockey career. And she said, hey, why not give it a shot? So she went over there, didn't know anyone, didn't know the language very well, um, but she kind of fell in love with it. Um, her teammates were amazing, the coaches were amazing, so um, she stuck with it, kept going, and so she found out she had made the team, and then soon after I found out I made the team, so we were like, well, we're going to do this together. So uh, it was a great experience being able to see my sister in the Olympic Village, kind of hang out with her, go cheer her on, for her to be able to come cheer me on. Um, but as both athletes, not just one of us supporting the other. It was just kind of cool to, I don't know, go through that with her. Now with, you know, all the different scheduling and the, you know, just sheer amount of people that are over there, mm -hmm. I mean, was it tough to have a lot of time together? Yes and no. I mean, I th it was better than we had been used to. I mean, I had been training in Florida and she had been training in Korea, so we hadn't had any time together for the past like year or two. So um, we made it work. We kind of saw each other at least once a day. Um, getting to her games is tough just because, like you said, I mean, there's so many people, so many things going on. Our schedules are different, but um, I figured out the bus schedule. I got to as much of her games as I could. Sometimes it was a period. Sometimes it was two periods. But um, I did my best to be able to support her, and she was able to make quite a few of my games. So it worked out pretty well, but it wasn't the easiest. Now, tell us a little bit about your Olympic experience. I mean, it's something, you know, most of us watch on TV, and I'm sure it's hard for us to imagine what it's really like. But, I mean, what was the whole experience like, you know, from the opening ceremonies on through? Yeah, um, it's, it's, I was the same way. I'd always watched it on TV, and I'd imagine being there, but until you're actually there, it's, yeah, it's so much different. I mean, um, the opening ceremonies was um, pretty cool. You lay out your whole outfit, you get all dressed up with your roommates, take pictures, you get there and you're, this is kind of the first moment you realize you're at the Olympics, you're in a room with, I mean, all the athletes from all the other countries, but I mean, almost starstruck by your own um, Team USA athletes, you see Sean White, Lindsey Vaughn, and you're just in a room with all these people and you're just on their team at that point. So I, that was pretty cool. And then to walk out um, with all of them, I'll never forget that. And right before I walked out, I actually, my sister had just gotten there their team came a little later because they're obviously the last one to walk out. So she ran up and found me like moments before I was about to exit. And so we got a little emotional there just because um, didn't think we were going to see each other. So that was pretty cool. But just in general, being at the village, meeting the other Team USA athletes, other athletes from around the world, it's amazing. And being able to go support them and watch all these different events. We're used to just having our own event, the Women's World Championships Hockey and you don't get to see snowboarding or um, figure skating. So it was really cool. Now, you know, even going into the games, you know, were you fairly confident that you guys would, you know, either win or at least be in serious contention for the gold? Yeah, I mean, we've always been, well, I think we went in ranked one or two. I mean, it's, it's usually us in Canada. And so we were confident for sure, but um, we lost our first game to Canada. So going into that gold medal game, it was we needed that revenge. I think we had lost five or six in a row to them in the lead up to the Olympics as well. So um, you never know what's going to happen, but uh, I had a lot of confidence in my team and my teammates and um, knew we had the ability to get the job done and come back with a gold medal. And the gold medal game itself, like you said, against Canada proved to be uh, quite exciting with, you mm -hmm. know, a, a shootout to finish it. Um, I imagine, you know, it would be a stressful and nerve-wracking experience, you know, under any circumstance, especially to have it end that way, I'm sure it was, um, <laughs> you know, quite, a, quite an experience for your team. Right, yeah, I mean, uh, once, I, once the overtime buzzer ended, I knew right away, I knew we were going to a shootout. A lot of people didn't think it would ever end in a shootout. I knew that was the rule. It was hard to believe that it actually was going to go to a shootout, but 
it did, and I found out I was shooting, and I was a little nervous, but what can you do? You got to just go out and we've done shootouts a million times, just go out and do your thing. Um, but yeah, it was to watch uh, Maddie Rooney make that last save and to know that you actually won a gold medal, that was one of the coolest feelings. Um, and to be able to throw your gloves, it's awesome. And what's the experience like? You know, we see, again, we see it on TV, you know, one of the athletes stand there and, you know, our national anthem's played mm -hmm. and you're, you know, getting your gold medals and stuff. You know, what's, what's going through your head at that point? Yeah, it's just, you're kind of thinking about all the hard work and dedication you've put in, the ups and the downs you've had throughout your career, all the people that have helped you get to that point. And, you know, I mean, I could look up and see my parents and my sister in the stands, but I knew all the people back home watching from at 2 or 3 a.m., whatever time it was, and all the people that had gotten me to that point. So just kind of reflecting on that, but while you're standing with your 22 teammates um, belting out the national anthem, it's a pretty cool feeling. I know, just from seeing uh, some of my friends on Facebook and things like that, you know, there were a lot of tired people the next day going yep. to work that had stayed up very late to watch the whole game, and, you know, obviously it went longer than even <laughs> people thought it was going to. Uh, did you have, you know, additional time over there once you were done, or did you have to come back right away? Yep, we stayed, uh, I think it was three or four more days until the closing ceremonies, and then as soon as the closing ceremonies were done, we went home the next day. But, yeah, it was nice to be able to have a few more days there, um, enjoy the win, and then be able to really experience the Olympics and not worrying about tiring yourself out and whatnot. So we got to watch the curlers win the gold medal, which was, that was a lot of fun. Um, and just kind of get to really explore the villages and the other events and stuff. That's great. And I know you had a pretty busy schedule even once the games were done. I kept seeing, you know, on Instagram, different places that you guys were, you know, all over the place. Yep. Uh, tell us about some of the things you got to do once you came back to the U.S. Yep, so our first stop was L.A. We went directly from Seoul to L.A., got in at 6 a.m. and we're on the Ellen Show that day. Uh, I went to a Kings game, then we were down to Florida, Tampa Bay Lightning game. That's where we trained all year, so um, that's kind of why we went there. And then East Coast, we, I think we did a Capitals game, a Wizards game, Rangers. We were on the Jimmy Fallon show. I'm probably leaving things out. But uh, we did a lot of cool things, but I think the coolest thing that we got to do was just interact with um, fans and some of the little girls that had been watching our game and just hear all of their stories about how much pride they had watching us play. And, um, I think that was the coolest thing, being able to share the medal and our experience with them. And as we mentioned uh, at the top of this uh, interview, uh, you guys came back and they had an event in Vadnais Heights yep. that uh, honored both you and your sister. Um, you know, what kind of emotions were going through? I know, I know it was tough even just to line that up because you and your sister had kind of unique travel schedules. You guys had barely, you know, been in one place at the same time. But you all, you and your family, your parents were there too. Put on, you know, had this event that was put on for you guys. You know, what did you think when you? I was there, and what did you think when you first came in? Were you surprised how many people were there? Yeah, it was incredible um, for it to work out the way it did with us only having one day for the city of Adams Heights to put on such a great event, and um, it was incredible to see how many people came out to show their support for us and um, to welcome us home. It really felt like a welcoming, and um, I know it was, I. I was pretty happy about it, and I, I know it meant a lot to my whole family. Yeah, I mean, I imagine it must be something to sit there, and I know you're, you know, you guys had like your high school coach, I think, spoke, yep. and the mayor, and your parents got to speak, and, um, you know, people that I'm sure were instrumental in the whole journey from when you're little on up, and, um, you know, it was neat to see, you know, all the really little kids in their little white bear jerseys <laughs> yeah. and stuff, little girls especially that, um, you know, I'm sure they're the next generation, so... You know, who knows, 10, 15 years, they might be in the Olympics themselves. Yeah, I mean, like you said, to have all those people that played such a big role in me and my sister getting to where we had gotten, um, that was really special to us. And then also to have the little girls there that I was in their shoes 10, 15 years ago, and um, hopefully I can be a good role model for them and give them someone to look up to, and hopefully they can be in my shoes one day. And uh, right after the event, you got to go right outside there and skate with some of the kids because they had named uh, the rink there by the yep. commons area uh, in the Hannah and Marissa Brandt rink or something to that effect. Um, imagine that must be a great honor too. Yeah, it was, I, that was a surprise to us. And um, it was really cool to hear the mayor say that he was going to name the rink after us. And um, to be able to then go out and skate, they'd gotten the ice already for us to go skate out there. and. Um, I know the girls had a lot of fun um, skating. It was cold, but um, anytime you get to skate 
skate with a group of girls that are excited to be out there with you, it's a lot of fun. And I know your schedule really hasn't let up a whole ton, and we're already, you know, a couple months past the Olympics. You know, what, what kind of things are you up to these days? Yeah, I'm traveling a lot. Some of it's for fun. Um, some of it's media stuff. Um, but when I am in town, it's just kind of taking care of errands and, um, yeah, just catching up with people because there's a lot of people that I haven't seen in a while. So it's, it's been good to be back a little bit here. Have some time, I'm sure, even with your parents and family and yep. everything. And um, you know, are you still always constantly training, or is that something you can take a little break from? Uh, a little break, um, intense uh, of intense training. I don't have anything until September that I need to be at full 100% go for. So I'll probably stay off the ice a little bit longer, uh, rest up my body. I have a few things I gotta get fixed. So um, that's kind of the way it is after. I don't even know how many years of intense training without really a break. So um, working out a little bit, but definitely taking taking some time. And you know, what's kind of the next step for you then? Is there you know like another World Championships or another big event before the next Olympics? Yeah, I mean, there's World Championships every year other than the Olympic year. So September is the start of the new training year for us, and there'll be World Championships next April. So uh, that's kind of the next next thing I have going for me. Now, I understand, you know, you've won championships, you know, the college level and other national championships before this Olympics. You know, how does this compare? I mean, is this completely different or is there some similarities to each one? Yeah, I get that question a lot, actually, and it's, it's a good problem to have um, trying to compare championships. Um, I won three national championships at Minnesota, and those were unbelievable. And I, it's hard to compare the differences between that and an Olympic gold medal because, um, there's, I don't know. It's just impossible to compare. But uh, I'm lucky for each each one of them, and I wouldn't trade any for anything. So I'm pretty happy. And have you gotten tired of showing off the gold medal yet? I know, especially at that event, obviously, especially with kids. You know, every two seconds, I could see that somebody <laughs> was you know taking a look at it or putting it on. No, it's it's so cool. Um, when when you hand it to someone, I I've learned to make sure I hold it until they really have a grasp of it, because nobody realizes how heavy it is until you actually hold it and um, that's the first thing you hear is, wow, I didn't think it'd be that heavy. And they do the whole like drop. I'm like, <laughs> and it's been dropped a few times, which is fine. But I'm trying to minimize that because it's got a few dents in it. Definitely. And um, are you hoping to uh, you know, take part in the next Olympics in four years? Yeah, I mean, I, I think for right now, my answer would be yes. Um, obviously, I have to continue to make the team and stay healthy. But I think as of now, I would, I would like to be there. That's still, even though time goes fast, that still is a long ways yeah. off. I'm sure it's, you're still in that nice period now where you can just kind of savor what's happened and get ready for the next thing. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, I'm afraid we're out of time, but I want to thank you so much for uh, coming by today and uh, congratulate you again on all your success. And uh, hopefully we'll be chatting with you again in the future uh, with maybe another gold medal or <laughs> world championship. For sure. All right, thank you, Joe. Thank you. And it's time for another short break. We'll be right back with more of Northeast Journal in just a minute. Some of today's veterans have a new battle to fight. It's unemployment. The unemployment rate of today's veterans coming home from war is 12%. That's twice the Heartland average. Tribute to the troops and the armed forces are asking for your help. Hire today's veterans. Visit PositivelyMinnesota.com slash veterans. Welcome back to Northeast Journal. It's always important to teach our teenagers about the dangers of drinking and driving. And it's especially vital during this season of the year with so many proms and graduation parties taking place. Area first responders recently put on a mock crash at White Bear Lake South Campus. Producer Mary Klein has a story along with videographers Nick Anderson, Brian Henschen, and Anthony Miller. Oh my god! Don't look at me! Oh my god! <laughs> I want to go see that though. Dude, that was actually really funny. What about like, uh, actually super funny? What is the money? What ate the cake? Nothing's happening to me! Um, oh, he blows up! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Jurassic Park. This movie is really boring. Anyone else agree? Yeah, I mean, I agree, guys. I think we should go see Game Night at the movie theater. Anyone down? Yes, let's go. Yes. Sure, why not? Let's go. I'll drive. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. No one's gonna... <laughs> I'm throwing out these stale mushrooms or marshmallows. <laughs>
All right, everyone needs to leave. My parents are on their way home. Everyone out, 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 out. Taylor, 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 you can't drive Taylor. You cannot drive Taylor. You cannot. I'm driving. I'm driving. Oh yeah. You can drive with me. You you can with me. Ejected. What happened? I, I, all of a sudden, everything just okay. happened. Okay. Are you okay? Does anything hurt anywhere? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Can you stand up for me? Have you guys been drinking? Uh, just a little. How much is a little? Uh, I don't know. Just a couple sh shots. Okay. One, one thousand. Two, one thousand. Right foot. Two. Seven. Eight. You know what the legal limit is in Minnesota? No. No? It's 0.08. Okay. You're a 0.16. You're twice the legal limit. Okay? So if you turn around for me, you're going to be under arrest for DWI. Go ahead and take a seat. 358, you're under arrest.
Cooper's mom. I am. I have some bad news for you today. There's been a car accident. No. Taylor was in the car and she was killed. No. Well, I'm sorry to have to this That can't be true. It can't be true. That's all we have time for on this month's show. Thanks for tuning in and join us again next month for another edition of Northeast Journal.